How's it going everyone? So today's video, we're heading over to Las Vegas where we're going to be attending the tuning school for HP tuners. They're gonna show us how to use HP tuners. I got the course material behind me here. I'm gonna show you guys what's included and uh, we'll go from there. They're gonna send you, if you guys register for this course, they will send you the course materials, which I'll show you in a second. And they will send you those as soon as you register and then you can review those go over all that stuff and then attend the live training uh, hands-on course, which I will show you guys that experience in this video. Okay, so we have our beautiful ACR Dodge Viper table here, and this is the course that you're gonna receive. So you're gonna have the Dodge, it's a level one Dodge beginners course using HP tuners, VCM suites, um, and this is the tuning school that will be um, providing this and they make the kit. So they show you how to use HP tuners, the MPVI2 or the VCM suite and all of that stuff. Um, this is quite a hefty manual. So it's um, almost 400 pages. I mean, it's, it's pretty significant. And then also the fueling guide shows you how to do that. And then they also have these very handy uh, quick guide like reference sheets. So if your car or vehicle or truck or whatever uh, Hemi engine is a heads and cam modified vehicle, you follow this checklist. If it's forced induction, you're gonna follow this checklist. If it's just bolt-ons, it's a little bit uh, simpler and it's just this double-sided piece of paper here or laminated paper and you're gonna follow this guide and it will instruct you on how you're gonna tune the vehicle. Also, there's a tuning tree and this just basically goes through a bunch of the uh, features that are and parameters that are going to be in your VCM suite. So we got the kit, let's go ahead and head over to Vegas and we'll go through the whole training course. to our destination, Dino Jet. So we'll go ahead, come inside, and we'll see what's up. So let me take you guys in. Tuning School welcomes you to Dodge Level 1 Hands-On Class. We follow the yellow brick road to the back. <laughs> on in. A bunch of cool bikes here. This guy will scare the crap out of you. It's pretty cool. So they got a bunch of different dynos and stuff. I guess they do more than just cars. So they got power commanders for bikes, so all sorts of testing stuff for the bikes. And then this stuff here. We'll walk up to our training course where everyone's ready. Actually, we're gonna go through and do some quick introductions. So we like to get to know you guys. I want you guys to get to know us a little bit. Um, so basically what we're looking to know from y'all is what your name is, where you're from, where your experience level with tuning dodges is, whatever that is, you can be completely open about that. So if you don't have to like, you know, be as much crap, you can never do it's okay, that's why you're here. Um, and then what you're hoping to learn. Now, these last two ones are important to us, to me and Bob, because it's gonna tell us how we can teach the class. So if everybody in here says I've tuned dodges for 10 years, we're gonna teach a very different class than if everybody in here says I've never tuned a dodge. Same thing with what you're hoping to learn. If you guys kind of give us a really quick one or two bullet points, maybe three, but the things you're looking to take away from this class, me and Bob are gonna take it upon ourselves to make sure you guys get that by the time you leave here. It's a big deal to us. So we wanna get both these things done for you guys. So me and Bob will go first. We'll let you guys know a little bit about ourselves. We can go first. Hi, my name is Bob Morelli. I do a lot of the curriculum writing that you guys learned from. I've been doing this since 1997. And I started out with Buick Grand Nationals, and we did it because there was no real tuning available. It was all mail order chips, and I realized there was a reason we were there. It's, it's we're the bridge between the people that make the software and the people that actually use it, and need to know how the software work, how does it affect an engine, how you not blow your stuff up, all of the above. So we've been doing this a long time, a long way. We picked up Brett here at the bus stop in middle school, and uh, he's been he's been awesome ever since. He, he started out as kind of like a clean sheet, which was great. Uh, we started out as just pushing the broom and learning, and I realized he had a great a great mind to kind of absorb. So, uh, yes. Brett. So my name is Brett McCullin. Um I'm born and raised in, uh, it's actually Odessa, Florida. It's the same little town that the shop's actually at. Yep. So uh, I actually 
my role in the company is I oversee all of the classes. So not only these Dodge ones, but the Fords and GMs as well. I oversee the instructors and the teams that do them. I handle all the details in the background leading up to it, all the details afterwards. Um, and I really get to enjoy it. I love being able to travel the country and the world, meeting all of you guys, hearing your stories. Um, and to me, it's exciting to be able to teach you information that makes your lives better. So in one way or another, whether you're here because you want to start a business or you're here because you just want to make your own car faster or run better, it's gonna better your quality of life. And to me, that's exciting to give you information that you can take and just make your eyes better. And so give you a little more information here, people in front of you here, I have a lot of experience with tuning, like Dodge's in particular since 2006. However, Brett doesn't, but what Brett does have is software expertise. So you have a good balance. If you want to know how the software works in any way, shape, or form, what you want to make it do, he's your guy. In the artificial neural networking class this weekend, uh, we will work on that in an advanced class, but understand you will understand what it is and kind of the premise of why and what they do. Speed density is how a lot of guys do tuning right now with anything with a cam. Uh, we'll go through that as well. You don't have to go that route, but again, we'll go through it. And then number four here, this should take us up through lunchtime, which is scanner parameters. Uh, and then we'll go from there tomorrow and see how far we get. So, any questions so far? And it's just the top end or the bottom end. So you can advance or retard the cam if you're looking for more top end power or more low end power. So in the days before variable cams, and here's the problem, everybody turns this off and replaces it with a cam that's not variable, which is dumb when you think about it. In the old days, you had to pick one. You'd say, well, I'm gonna retard the cam a couple degrees because I want a little more power here. But now you don't have to do that. You can say, hey man, this is kind of a turtle down low, I'm gonna adjust the cam a little bit. Make sense? So now you have that freedom, that ability to do it. We'll teach you how in a little bit, but just take away from this to understand what happens to one, so the intake lobes on the cam, will happen to the exhaust lobes as well. It's gonna be the same thing, because they arrive the same camshaft. When it comes down to torque, there is no strain gauge on the car measuring torque, right? Strain gauge is the gauge, as you pull the car, it measures how much torque is used to pull the car. The car doesn't have any of that. So this number, both of these numbers, this is a hard set number, but this number, this actual torque, it's calculated. So it's looking at a bunch of different things, and usually the algorithm that they have to calculate this is really, really long but it takes into account how much airflow there is, how much spark there is, how much fueling's being used. Cam angle. Cam angle, takes into a lot of stuff to account, and then it spits out, because of all of these variables, we're making 425 foot pounds. Yeah, absolutely. And then it measures that, takes all the inputs, decides how much torque, it measures that against what the expected torque was. There's a table that says, this is how much torque you should make. What is, what is this tell us about the fueling? That's fine, right? If it's oscillating, we're near what? Stoic. Stoic. What's stoic? 14, 17. So why does this say 16? Right? So because it's in the tailpipe of the car, it's going to read me in. It's even now, it's like super late. Because it takes time for that air back there, and there's a lot of air around it. Right? So it's the, the reading is diluted by that fresh air. So that's not uncommon. We're not worried about that at all, part, though. What are we worried about? Yeah. Fix that. So we only did we carried try to carry out the 15 to what 48. Right. So it's knocking on 15 now, where it wasn't before. So we could try to dig that hole. Remember how we talked about that before? We dig that little trench, the little bucket around 5,000 a little bit more. So why don't you go to your editor for me really quick? Okay. So here's what it ended up making. Just some small gains. It kind of ran out of time and had some bad fuel in it. We think, but. 
Day one is done. So we're gonna unstrap this and we'll continue tomorrow. All right guys, so we're headed to day two now at the tuning school in Las Vegas. Day one, we learned a lot of uh, theory and just working with the application and how to navigate and some of the terminology and concepts that are used. And you guys saw that we got to go on the dyno with a pretty much stock vehicle. I think it actually was 100% stock and mess around with it a little bit and just kind of see how that all works. So day two, I'll keep you guys informed and we'll recap on what we're doing. But we're gonna be, I know we're gonna be using some um, modified cars, even heavily modified cars and putting them on the dyno and working with them. So let's go and see what they have in store for us. Here we are, day two, let's go. All right, so we got this Challenger on here. Brett's in here, just about to load it up. Yep. What uh, What's done to this thing? Um, it's actually just a Whipple. Uh, it's a Whipple kit. I wanna say this is a 2.9, but I can't, I, I don't quote me on that. But it's a Whipple kit with um, literally nothing else. Like I don't even think it has exhaust, no headers, anything like that. I think it does have shorty headers on it, actually. So we definitely got a Whipple. We got a 392 in there, 6.4 liter. And we're not sure what else. Uh, I see stock manifold, is it? No, is it? Like it's got a header and a collector. It's is it? Is a, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. On the Chevy side. Yes. So this is the file we got out of the car. Okay, the folder for it and save it as download. Uh, this is a list of everything that's different between the two tune files. Right? And you see it's broken out. So you've got engine under idle, these are the things that's different under idle. Speed density, you see change, the VE settings, variable camshaft stuff, right? Oxygen sensors, power enrichment. You guys see all this? Lane slash fuel saving, all the MDS stuff's been changed. So if you go to your limits, what does step one say to do? Read the BCM. Read the BCM. That's done, right? What's step two say to do? Startup changes. Startup changes. What's the first sub step there say? If it was lean, you'd have to add fuel to get the port inside. So rich is the presence of too much fuel. Lean is the presence of not enough. Lean, you're adding a bunch of fuel, right? about 30% fuel to get us to our target. How do we know we're at our target? It's an oscillation. That's an oscillation going on, right? All right, so that's a wrap on the two-day course here with Bob, one of the instructors. Uh, what would you say as far as somebody that would want to join this? Come to class but learn some of the software first. Yeah, definitely. It, it's not a bad idea to just download the software. It doesn't cost you anything. Take some time, get familiar with it, and then you'll show up and learn a lot, lot more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because like, even when we were starting off the course, you know, they kind of just jumped right into things. We did, you know, go over some of the basics, but mm -hmm. I think you would get left behind if you didn't at least read yep. some of the, the it's, books it's too. It's always better just to do a little more preparation work, you know? For sure. Get the course uh, material beforehand. Yeah. Spend some time going through the books, you know, get a little bit familiar. Even if you don't understand it all, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is um, if you guys register for the course, they'll ship you out the material yep. first. Yep, absolutely. So the sooner you sign up, the, the sooner you'll have the material. Yep. You can review it, go over it. Yep. And everything that's, you know, taught in the course, they'll take the course above and beyond what's in the book, but um, they'll review anything that's in the book and you can take from there hands on. And it's good to read it before because you can ask questions while you're oh, yeah. here, so. And the best students with the best experience always get the, the software downloaded first. They spend a week or two just playing with it. There's sample files, things you can just kind of play with. And then when you come to class, your questions are much better. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, well, thank you. No problem. All right, all right. so that's a wrap for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to the Tuning School for allowing me to come out there and experiencing um, some hands-on tuning with the Hemi stuff and the new Mopar stuff. So it's a valuable tool, you guys. Like you heard Bob say, um, I think right now they're pretty much the only ones that are offering uh, tuning courses for Hemi with HP tuners. So it's a pretty good opportunity. I don't know how long they'll be doing it. Um, I'm sure they'll be doing it for a while, but you guys, you know, take a look at this opportunity. It's really not that expensive for what it is, and it'll get you into tuning if you're interested in doing that. And adjusting your own vehicle. Anyways, you guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the tuning school. I'll link it in the description below and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.